yourself out of the hot zone. A chopper or my boss, I just got a report from the intel team. An enemy unit is en route to the hills. Looks like they mean to hunt you down. You'll have to make it past them somehow. Roger. Time doesn't stop while you use the iDroid. You can even move around while using it, but pay attention to your surroundings. Arriving shortly at LZ. Good job. There's a big one! On station at LZ! missions, and you can also summon it to your location. I've taken the liberty of calling it the D-Walker. It's armed with a suppressed tranquilizer gun. If you want to add other weaponry or upgrade the chassis, give the order from your iDroid. Boss, I've updated the mission list. We received a new job offer. It doesn't seem connected to Cypher or Skullface at all. But if it goes well, we may get an Afrikaans interpreter. The details are on your iDroid. You know the hardest man to break. The type who's fooling himself. That takes time. It's easier to live a convenient lie than a painful truth. Is that the piece you've chosen, Doc? I'm not lying. Of course. Just let me check one or two things. On that day, you were in the control tower with him. Lucky you. That's how you got out unscathed. And you escaped on one of their choppers. Only you, right before the base went under. They had me blindfolded the whole time. I've never been so scared. The whole flight, I thought they'd kill me. But, but thinking of you kept me going. My comrades, all the way. And? There was a plane journey, and then we traveled by road. When they finally took off the blindfold, I was in kind of a warehouse, on the floor. 
Afghanistan. It, it was that research lab. I couldn't believe they'd taken me halfway around the world. And soon enough, he came. Skullface. He's the one who's really behind that mother base attack. He forced me into that research. What kind of research? He told me to build a bipedal walking tank for the Soviet Union. Like Peace Walker. A system that could fire an ICBM-class nuclear weapon. That's how the Sahelanthropus project got started. Sahelanthropus. Those AI weapons I'd made in Costa Rica were like toys by comparison. A whole world apart from reptilian four-legged crawling and, and that ridiculous hunched-over bipedal waddling. My design evolved to the dawn of mankind. Sahelanthropus, the first steps towards humanity. An upright, bipedal weapon system. Originally, Sahelanthropus was going to be a manned weapons platform. I designed a cockpit in its head, and I planned to fill it with water as a buffering agent. Like how Paz modified Zeke for human control. Don't compare me to some amateur. I designed it for human control from the beginning. The problem was miniaturizing the posture control AI. You remember the reptile pod? The AI that controlled your unmanned weapons. Attaching it externally makes it vulnerable, so this time I wanted it beneath the armor. Meaning I had to make the AI smaller. I got it down to less than a tenth the size without any loss in computation speed. But it was still too big for the cockpit. There wasn't enough room for the pilot. If I made the head bigger, its body would have to be bigger to support it. Uh, too big to be practical. In the end, human piloting was taken off the table. I tested a remote control system too, but there was the time lag and I wasn't satisfied with its precision either. Plus, it would be useless if the enemy jammed it. So next, I went back to trying an AI-only system. To do that, I had the AI pods recovered from Nicaragua. <sighs> this was a hybrid AI, a combination of Peace Walker's reptile and mammal pods. The only AIs that had ever successfully operated an unmanned nuclear weapon system. Really? You'd need some help to get that working. Expert help. Did you work with someone? I worked alone. You did that yourself? <laughs> That's the thing. The AI didn't pan out in the end either. But I did finally get Sahelanthropus walking by folding over its upper body to lower its center of gravity. The first upright bipedal locomotive weapon system in the history of mankind. I guess technically it falls into the anthropoid ape category. I don't see the benefit of having it stand taller. On terrain with significant differences in elevation like Afghanistan, you need a body that's vertically adaptable. That also lets it attack from long range while using mountain ridges for cover. So, making it walk upright was the most important factor in giving it superior height capability. As the name suggests, that was the whole point of Sahelanthropus. But I was being pushed for results. Having the AI mounted externally would have been the fastest way to get it working. I just needed more data so it could maintain its balance. But Skullface refused to wait. He dismissed the idea of AI control and took Sahelanthropus away from me before I could finish it. But it was walking when it came after you. That's just it. I don't understand how Skullface got it to move upright. Without a pilot or an AI. And walking at that speed, too. It's beyond anything I could have imagined. This is like the Wright brothers making it to the moon. I'm just as clueless as you are. So this Soholanthropus, where is it now? I have no idea. All my experiments took place at that cave. I've never seen it anywhere else. Besides, it's still just an incomplete prototype at this point, and nothing but a paper tiger. Even if it can walk, it's far from being a viable weapons platform. It wouldn't be useful in actual battle.
Yeah. You see that in the movies? That's an automatic. Don't bother trying to dampen the recoil. You do that with a revolver. We diamond dogs are now a force to be reckoned with. We've got the world's attention. We're not some tribal militia. So don't act like one. You will learn how a real soldier fights. You will forget everything Hollywood taught you. And if I catch you doing something else, you'll know it. Engravings give you no tactical advantage whatsoever. There was some fancy shooting. Pretty good. That's not the target. Who's are only the Viscount gets rescued. Can't understand why he receives special treatment. But I don't imagine it'll be a problem to save the other prisoners too. You found the interpreter. Now follow him to the target. Yeah. <sighs> 
This is your last chance. Die Empje LA se olieveldregte. Waar het die inligting vandaan gekom? The MPLA's oil field rights. Where did you get this information? I told you. I only know it was an anonymous source. It was an anonymous bron. Moet nie my vir a poepal vat nie. You are not fooling anybody. Ask any of the others. Nobody knows anything. I say you must ander probeer vra. Oh, so let same story op gaan. Dit is hoe kom jy nie die prutte kan vertrou. Weet jy hoeveel Afrikaners sit onder jelle geleid tyd in die boere oorlog? You made up a story with the others. You British are all liars. You know how much the Afrikaners suffer because of you and the Boer War. That wasn't me. I said it was not you. But it was you that us betrayed. But it was you that betrayed us. It wasn't me. It was the Viscount. Good luck. I see next bit. It's a sicker climb. Rescue target was behind some kind of plot. Boss, I did some digging, and it seems the target himself gave us this mission through a representative. Obviously, he couldn't contact us directly due to his predicament. But still, something about this Viscount doesn't add up. Een woord vir mis. Maak een sak nie. Kan jy nie oor blijf in die een om te praat. Waar het jylle die inlichting oor die MPLA's olieveldrechte gekry? Where did you get the information on the MPLA's oil field rights? Nah, I really don't know. Sy sê dat sy niks weet. Believe me. So jy verwacht vir my om te glo. Jy het die MPLA gekontak op inlichting van anonieme bron. You mean you attempted to contact the MPLA based on information from an unknown source? I, I didn't. I didn't try to hide anything. The Viscount said to keep quiet for now. That's all. So he says he had no intention to hide anything, but the Burgraaf had her still held. Ha! This is as the Burgraaf is killed. Good. The Burgraaf can tell us the rest. And the Viscount can tell us the rest. Wait! At least... Talk to the bike out. Oh, you're back. Please. Someone. Please. Hey, what you? 
That prisoner wasn't the target either. We got some more information, though. They're going to interrogate the target at night. Turns out he's a real two-faced son of a bitch. He 
was planning to secure the MPLA's oil field rights for himself in exchange for swapping the CFA's alliance from the anti-government United rebels to the state-backed MPLA. He hid this from the Afrikaners, but once he thought the jig was up, he tried to pin it on the other British personnel and take off. The Afrikaners captured him, and that was when he asked us to rescue him, and only him. I'll throw him in the brig for now, but we may have to be extra persuasive with this one. By the way, boss, we got some interesting news out of our friend the Viscount. He mentioned that more than a few PFs in the region have purchased Walker gears. The CFA is the same. That's Soviet Army technology, and it's still a prototype. Only Cypher could be leaking it to the PFs. But the question is, why? Boss, we have an emergency. Get back to Mother Base right now. I mean it. Hurry. <laughs> Happy birthday, Snake. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Snake. <laughs> Happy birthday, Snake. <boss.
need to talk to you about this. Quiet. Can you meet me at her cell here on the base? Whenever's fine. Thanks. Staff member who tried to dress her, breathing through tubes. Other than that, she's completely cooperative. She understands English, but she never speaks, sweats, or breathes. What? Well, not with lungs, at least. She breathes through her skin. Clothing would suffocate her. Showers are okay, but she can't be submerged. What's wrong with her? She's drinking through her skin. She's okay? She's okay. She just can't move when she's taking in water. Look. See that? She hasn't eaten a thing since she got here. She doesn't eat either? Never. It's photosynthesis. Photosynthesis? That's the verdict from the medical staff? No. The jury's still out. It's the only explanation for what we've seen. The Gru had a man with that ability in its Cobra unit. Now, we don't think she's contagious. Some of the staff can't stomach her. It's starting to affect morale. Can't you send her on a mission? By herself? No. But as you know, she does have skill. Why not take her out on one of your missions? She seems to like you. Of course, only if you think she'll be useful. Next time you go out, you keep her in mind. Remember Professor Galvez on his instrument during this day? <laughs> Such a funny sound for a musical instrument. He said the Soviets invented it. Everyone sure seemed impressed. Music has no borders. The professor taught me that. Where's Professor Galvez anyway? I'm sorry, Snake. My head hurts. Could you 
Let me rest. will remain here at Mother Base for now, but not as a member of Diamond Dogs. I still don't trust him. That work for you? Fine by me. He can't be allowed Roger. to contact with staff either. Yeah. A lot of the guys would love some payback for nine years ago. We still need him alive. But we have to restrict his movements. He can only go where we tell him. And of course, the interrogations will continue. He worked for that skull bastard for nearly a decade. He still has more to tell us. How long are we going to press him? If our investigation shows he really had nothing to do with the attack, we'll reconsider his place here. But I don't expect that to happen. Remember that water tank-shaped object in Emmerich's lab in the Soviet base camp? The thing that started talking to you like a possessed answering machine? That was a pod belt for housing the AI used to control unmanned weapons. You remember, back in 74 in Costa Rica. It was in those machines you fought there. They were designated pupa, chrysalis, cocoon, and basilisk. And each of them was fitted with an AI unit called the Reptile Pod. Emmerich created it. It mainly handled the machine's posture control and autonomous behavior. But the basilisk, aka Peace Walker, also featured a second AI pod. That one was called the Mammal Pod. And it was created by Dr. Strangelove. She tried to recreate the boss's personality through the Mammal Pod. But you pulled out its memory boards. That's when it transferred its own functions to its reptile pod. Just like a human brain compensating for damage by using the remaining healthy parts. The result was a unique entity. A hybrid of the reptile and the mammal. It sank to the bottom of Lake Nicaragua with Peace Walker. But apparently they salvaged it and transported it to that lab. Don't let it deceive you, Snake. It may sound like the boss, but it has neither a personality, nor a will. Like Emmerich says, it's just a machine. You call that thing Sohalanthropus. Where does the name come from? Well, several years ago, an excavation team discovered a hominid skull in the Sahel region. Central Africa. The Southern Sahara. Cypher gave the specimen the name Sohalanthropus, Man of Sahel. And then they covered the whole thing up. Why? They probably wanted to monopolize information about human evolution to have a head start in their genetic research. At least, until they had an idea of what they'd found. It was that big of a discovery, huh? Sahelanthropus was a gracile hominid, estimated to have lived about seven million years ago. What's significant about it is how its skulls, foramen magnum faces down. In other words, its spinal column supported its head from underneath. It stood upright. Right. Which would mean the Helanthropus walked upright three million years before Australopithecus, making it the world's oldest human species. Walking upright. I get it. Hence the name Sahelanthropus for your machine. Walking upright was the decisive difference between our ancestors and other anthropoids. Our brains could get heavier once they were supported by the spinal column. That led to the use of tools and the development of complex communication through language. Only man is capable of this. My creation will be the progenitor of all bipedal weapon platforms. And you did this for Cypher? No, not at all. Sahelanthropus is the best proof that I never betrayed you guys. What do you mean? The reconstructed Sahelanthropus skull looked exactly like the skull we used as our logo nine years ago in the Caribbean. An army without a nation. Outside the world order. The design was based on Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed 250 million years ago, right? Yeah. When the world was a single landmass, that concept's at the source of our strength. I felt the same way about Sahelanthropus. Sure, I was forced to build it under their orders, but I always wanted to put its technology back in our hands someday. That's the reason I incorporated the old insignia into Sahelanthropus's name. 
don't you see? That's how much I was thinking about you guys. Oh, I see, all right. Thank I see someone you. desperate to cover his ass. You can say whatever you want after the fact. But that skull also symbolizes somebody else. Skull face. Emmerich is developing the walker gear for you and is supporting the R&D team from confinement. We're continuing to monitor him to make sure he doesn't try anything. Looks like you've gotten used to working with Quiet. I don't see a problem with giving her some new weapons. I've already talked it over with the R&D team. Being a scout sniper, there are two tasks you can give Quiet. The first is to infiltrate an outpost ahead of you and scout out the enemy's positions. The second is to send her to a sniping position and have her cover your infiltration. The kind of sniper support she'll provide will depend on the weapon you give her. Of course, this is all assuming she's willing to follow orders. Boss, this contract comes from the MPLA. The People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola. Apparently, new Western bipedal weapons have been deployed to Detati Abandoned Village and are a threat to their troops. Our job is to eliminate them. The bipedal weapons they're talking about are, of course, Walker Gears. As I previously reported, they're already in active service with PFs in Africa. But don't you find it strange? A PF employed by the West obtains a prototype developed by the Soviets, Yet the Russia-backed MPLA don't know the details. Eastern weapons technology developed in Afghanistan is being supplied to the West, in Africa. Only Cypher would be capable of making something like that happen. So boss, eliminate the Walker Gears at Detati Abandoned Village, just like the MPLA have asked. Once you do, the PF will need to contact its supplier, giving us a chance to close in on that supplier, Cypher. comes from the People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola, also known as the MPLA. The PF at Ditati Abandoned Village has been supplied with walker gears. Your job is to eliminate them all. Destroy them, extract them, whatever you see fit. This just might get us closer to the walker gear supplier, Cypher. Good luck, boss. Of the enemy will counterattack on their walker gears. That would complicate things. Handle this carefully. The PF at Ditati Abandoned Village has been supplied with walker gears. Your job is to eliminate them all. Targets have been deployed to that outpost. Find and eliminate all of them.
subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us.
Roger. Great. No targets remaining. Your objective's complete. Exfiltrate out of the hot zone by chopper or on land. down the aircraft Cypher sent after us. Not only that, she hit the cockpit. Who else could have done that? We're talking about a fighter jet traveling at Mach speed. What's your point? She hadn't been there. The boss's chopper would be at the bottom of the ocean right now, or it would have been followed right back to Mother Base. So let's say she does have some elaborate scheme in the works. If you want to catch her in the act, all we can do is sit back and wait. On the other hand, if she swears allegiance to the boss like our other Fulton recruits, he couldn't ask for a better partner. Oh, she's got you fooled. I have eyes on her. If she tries anything, she'll regret it. We lose nothing either way. Boss, about those Walker gears deployed by the CFA. It appears that it's not just the CFA. PFs all along the Angola Zaire border are also getting equipped with them. The bipedal technology was developed by the Soviets, but Cypher's the one supplying it to the PFs. The question is why? What's in it for them? The answer may lie in the compensation being traded to Cypher by the PFs. Many outfits operating in Africa get locally mined resources as spoils of war. Diamonds, nuggets of gold, and rare metals. According to the intel team, there's a PF convoy that regularly transports the goods. Escorted by armored vehicles, no less. Pretty heavy security for crossing the remote Angolan savanna. I can't imagine Cypher would be so interested in minerals alone. Those convoys have to be transporting something else. Something that holds the key to Cypher's plans. Boss, I want you to extract the truck, cargo and all, from the PF convoy. Let's find out what Cypher's real goals are. truck we want. 
But the intel team has spotted the unit that's been tasked with escorting it. They're stationed at the guard post to the north of Nova Braga Airport on the Savannah. The rendezvous with our target will be any time now. Start by heading to that guard post. Then follow the escort unit. It should lead you right to the target truck. Boss, extract them from the mission area. You can check the target details on your iDroid. First, head for the escort unit's guard post. It's to the north of Nova Braga Airport. Follow the escort unit. They should lead you right to the target. Be careful down there, boss! the guard post. Where's the escort unit? Yeah. 